With the NFL draft drawing near, it means it's mock draft season. And Nolan, in your latest version, you've done a contract-based mock draft, really basing it all upon the average salary that players make as a starter in the NFL, and then comparing that with what a player will be drafted and make in their rookie year. So let's take a look at some of those top positions in the average salary for starters. No big surprise, quarterback, far and away, the most expensive position in the league. Cornerback's actually number two, and you can see on down the list. So with that in mind, let's take a look at your picks in this contract-based mock draft. Starting with what jumps out the most, four quarterbacks in your top eight picks, one and two, Andrew Luck and RG3. That's pretty much according to plan. And let's look at those numbers for a second. If you look at Luck as the top pick, he makes an average, he'll make an average of about five and a half million dollars a year. So based on that comparison between what a starter makes, he's saving the Colts almost three and a half million dollars for what a starter makes, and he's gonna be the starter there in Indianapolis. Now let's look at the other two. At number four, Ryan Tannehill, and number eight, Brandon Whedon going to the Dolphins. How do you defend those picks? Well, the way quarterbacks are being paid now, it makes a lot of sense to draft a quarterback in the top 10. And you got a lot of teams behind there that even need quarterbacks. You look at Kansas City, you look at Philadelphia, Dallas. You don't know who's going to trade up into that top 10. So yeah, but when I look at Cleveland and I look at Miami, I see two teams that have quarterbacks that are very brittle, very injury prone. They're solid backups. They're not true starters. And I think that both teams would like to get better. I think they'll both come away with starters in this draft. So when you look at the money, though, they're not even really getting paid starter money. I mean, that's the comparison. When you look at number eight, isn't that basically what a backup makes? Essentially, that's why it makes too much sense. Before teams were looking to get out of the top 10, they couldn't trade those picks because nobody wanted to pay the contract. You're looking at a completely different situation now. Teams are trying to get into the top 10, and they want quarterbacks, the most, uh, the highest premium position in the league. So we could see four quarterbacks, maybe not in the top 10, but I think definitely in the top 20. I mean, these guys don't grade out like it, but they're going to end up being first round picks. You just have to believe it. Another interesting pick comes at number three, where a lot of people have Matt Khalil going there to the Vikings. You've put Morris Claiborne there. In terms of contract value and the money, does it make more sense for Claiborne? We have pressing needs both at tackle and at cornerback, but if you look at it from a financial perspective, cornerbacks are making $7.75 million, a true number one starting quarterback. There's a number one left tackle is making $6.6 6 million. So if you're just looking at it from financially, it makes more sense to go with the cornerback. For so long, it was the left tackle was you know, protecting that blind side was worth so much. It's not the case anymore with the rise of the passing game. Now, of all the picks in the top 10, only one doesn't really fit that money-saving model. It comes with Trent Richardson, the running back, going number five to the Bucks. What's up with that pick? Well, the average running back's making about $4.5 million, but in Richardson's case, you're talking about an elite franchise-type running back. The franchise tag for running backs right now is $8.2 million. I think he walks into the league from day one and is on an equal playing field with guys like Adrian Peterson, Michael Turner, Steven Jackson. I think he's a top-five back, and I think he should be paid well like one. So this is, if you look at it in that perspective, this would be a great value for the Tampa Bay Bucks. We don't see many of those in the league anymore, so many running backs by committee. If you get a number one back, I guess it's worth it. It looks like Trent Richardson may be that guy. That's a look at the top 10 picks of Nolan's mock draft. You can see the entire mock by going to profootballweekly.com.